Many years ago, when Star Citizen first opened its persistent universe, or PU, death had little consequence, and up until now, it's been pretty much the same. Sure, it's a bit of an inconvenience, and if you're a criminal, you might go to prison, but in the end, your inventory and your character are both fine. And so those pesky things like weather, wind, cold, and hot temperatures have never really mattered. I mean, hell, if you're gonna run out of water to drink, just backspace yourself right back into the station and you're fine. Well, that's all gonna be changing in patch 315, come later this year. Because that's when a death of a spaceman or permadeath is gonna be one step closer to being a reality. So you might want to consider taking a step back the next time you're trying to get close to the edge of that cliff for a nice screenshot to post on Reddit. Now some of you guys might be new and you may not know what a death of a spaceman is. Oversimplified, this game mechanic is permadeath, but it's not gonna work exactly as you might think. You see, every time you die, you'll have an option to stay where your body is and allow somebody to come revive you. However, if you choose to just immediately respawn in a cloned body, this will tick away at a total number of clone bodies you're able to use before your DNA degrades to the point of not being able to be cloned again, at which point your character permanently dies. After that, your inventory is passed on to your next of kin, or just a new character that you create under your same account, with the major penalty being that you've lost all your reputation, well, at least most of it, which is pretty significant because it's one of the ways that Star Citizen will measure your progression. The next patch, which is 315, scheduled in about three months from now, is going to introduce two important new features to the game. That's Medical Gameplay Tier 1 and Physicalized Inventory, which are both strongly interconnected. First, let's go over what Medical Gameplay Tier 1 is going to be adding into 315. When you become injured in this new patch, it's no longer going to be a simple matter of using a medipen to heal up your actor status. Instead, you're going to encounter a number of different types of injuries that will affect your player in severe and different ways. For example, if you fall off a cliff like the character in this video did, you may end up shattering both your legs and perhaps your arms. But if you happen to actually have died in that fall, you'll also have the option in 315 to stay within your body to allow somebody to come revive you. In the first condition where you've broken your legs, you'll no longer be able to move. You may be able to crawl, but that won't be very helpful if you've fallen down a ravine. And so you may need to rely on somebody to come actually heal you in one of the medical ships that we have in the game, such as the Cutlass Red, which is also being featured in this video. They'll be able to either drag you all the way to the ship, which may be somewhat dangerous, or they can use one of two different new equipment options that you'll have as a player in the game, which are a new medical attachment for your multi-tool, which allows you to both scan and heal a player's status up to a certain point, and a dedicated medical tool, which I believe will also help you do the same thing, but may help you do it more efficiently. The developers also recently discussed stimulant drugs, but I'm not sure if that's actually going to be in the next patch, but that will also eventually be an option. Now these medical tools will only be able to heal pretty light and superficial damage. For more serious problems, they're implementing a tiered medical issue system, where tier 3 is the least severe issue and tier 1 is the most severe. In all of these cases, you're going to need that classification of treatment in order for you to be fully healed. So say you use a medical pen to heal your tier 2 broken arm. With it healed, you may still be able to use your arm and your health pool will technically be at 100%, but you probably won't be able to hold a weapon steady. And your character may also suffer from adverse effects like severe pain. In order to resolve this issue, you'll have to either travel to a ship that has that classification of equipment, such as a Carrick, which has tier two, the Cutlass Red having tier three, or travel to a city where they'll have a tier one hospital. In the event of death though, you'll probably have to be dragged all the way back to that hospital in order to be revived. 
That is, of course, unless you have a medical ship like a Cutlass Red or a ship with medical facilities like the Carrick, which both will likely be able to revive you, however, won't be able to fix any severe injuries that you might have that go beyond its tier level. So that's to say that a tier 3 bed from the Cutlass Red will be able to revive you, but if you've got tier 1 injuries, you'll still have to travel to a hospital to be fully healed. But wait, you might be saying to yourself, or in the comments section at this point, that sounds really troublesome, especially considering you can die from a number of different bugs that are currently in 313. Well, there is going to be a pretty big downside to deciding to backspace into a clone. And that's tied to your physical inventory, which is the other component of 315. In this new patch, you'll have a physicalized inventory that's tied to locations, with a limited inventory that's localized to your character. How this works is that when you access your Moby Glass, depending on where you are, you'll have access to different inventories. If you're out in the middle of nowhere, you'll only have access to either your ship inventory if you're on your ship, or just your player's inventory with what's in your backpack and in your suit. When you go to big cities, you'll have access to that particular city's inventory, but you'll never have access again to a global inventory like what we have right now. So in 315, when you die, whatever's on your body and your inventory for your character, you lose. It remains there at your character until you go back to pick it up from your corpse. And that's all in addition to the likely fee and insurance you'll have to pay for using a clone. In essence then, 315 is going to make death very important because dying is going to have real consequences and it's something that you're going to want to try to avoid. But I think what's more is that it's going to make a lot of other aspects of the game much more important than they are right now. For example, the existing actor status system in the game requires that you drink water and consume food every so often. As it stands right now, it's not really an issue and people usually just backspace and get their food back and their water back. Now in 315, that's not going to be an option and you're going to have to buy food and water and even stock up on them every so often. And this also means that players will have to be much more careful about what sorts of engagements they get themselves into, whether they choose to be a pirate or a bounty hunter, as death will have more consequence. It's also going to make you carefully consider whether or not you want to go out and mine or do trading in a very dangerous area without somebody to help you out. So I think it will also help create a bit more community because of the danger of dying. This however brings up a pretty big issue I think with players who tend to play more solo and I think there's quite a few of those. And so I hope Seiji also considers adding a new service beacon type to the service beacon creation system that they already have in the game where instead of transporting a player from A to B, you have the option to send out a beacon for you to be come picked up and healed if you are disabled and unable to move or to further add an option to automatically send out a beacon if you are incapacitated or killed. Because remember, if you're dead and you're still technically within your body waiting to be revived, you can't access your Moby Glass, so how are you going to send out a beacon? And perhaps that's something that you can buy through insurance at the new hospitals like the one you see here in New Babbage, which will be added in the same patch. Speaking of which, hospitals are the only place you're going to be able to be cloned in come 315. No longer will you be able to be cloned in places like the Carrick, which only has a tier 2 bed, or the Cutlass Red, which only has a tier 3 bed. They'll only have the ability to revive you and heal up to that tier of injury. But probably one of the most exciting ways that these two new features are going to change the game is how it's going to add to the existing gameplay loops and add a whole new gameplay loop. So for example, with things like pirating, now you have something to loot off the body of the player that you kill and vice versa, Bounty Hunter has something to loot off of the pirate. Prisons also become a lot more scary because it's a bit of a free-for-all. Now you have a reason to shiv the prisoner right next to you because you can take their inventory to get out of the prison earlier. But the brand new gameplay loop we're getting is of course medical gameplay itself. Even without missions being added into 315, because we don't know if they will be, you're still going to be able to help players out who just type in chat that they need help being healed. Or org mates who have been injured, you can now go and save them and there's a whole loop to it. There's also the possibility of adding in missions like with the 890 jump mission to save some of the VIPs and revive them for example, or go down into the cave and rescue somebody who's been severely injured. And of course aside from the gameplay loop, we also now have the fact that 
players can now perform a non-combat role in combat operations, supporting their teammates through keeping them healed and reviving them when they go down. This is great for people who just aren't very good or don't care about FPS combat but still want to participate in org operations. And like I said earlier in the video, all of this is one massive step towards getting Death of a Spaceman in the game. Which may leave you curious what the last thing is that they need in order to actually have that system functioning. My guess? Several things. They probably need to have persistence and server meshing online first, which will hopefully be online by next year quarter one. But more importantly, they probably need just a bit more stability because right now a pretty standard bug like someone walking into you can kill you and that's no fun if permadeath exists. But what do you guys think? Are you excited for this or are you really worried that it's going to make the gameplay experience worse, at least for now? Because if I'm honest, the game isn't in a perfect state right now and if we've not got a lot of these bugs fixed that can cause insta-death, then having you know extra fees on top of that is just gonna make the game a bit less fun for when you actually die to a bug. I personally think that they can get around this by being a bit more forgiving with those fees, perhaps just have them very, very small for now, because I think in the end, it's really important to have this feature in the game and tested at this stage. But like I said, I'm eager to know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Be sure to let me know, and if you liked the video, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I've been Morphologist, and I'll see you in the next one.